Joining me again is Paul Thompson. His work has been featured everywhere from the Esquire Genius Issue to Fox News. He's the author of the book, The Terror Timeline. Paul, thank you for being here. Thanks. Why do you think the administration has tried so hard to prevent an, an investigation? Well, interestingly enough, even before 9-11, uh, the Bush administration uh, put forth some new rules really clamping down on the free flow of information, trying to uh, classify more documents and so forth. So I think they had uh, uh, a general kind of secretive attitude even before 9-11 happened. But then, you know, as we've seen in the film, there were quite a lot of things that don't look very good, frankly, for the Bush administration about the number of warnings that came in, the, uh, the lack of any kind of uh, real action taken. We know, for instance, uh, President Bush got the presidential daily briefing, bin Laden determined to strike in U.S., and the 9-11 Commission looked at what was done as a result of that briefing, what actions were taken in the month before 9-11, none. There were, they couldn't find any actions that were taken you know, in response to getting this urgent notice that this, the country uh, could be attacked inside the U.S. So naturally, you know, there's, when something like that happens, there's a, a tendency to cover up. Uh, and it's just been ex extreme. Everything uh, having to do 9-11, it seems, uh, is classified. Were you able to use the Freedom of Information Act at all? Actually, our, our website, uh, cooperativeresearch.org, we've tried just in the last uh, year or two to uh, put forth a number of, of requests for documents, and there have been other groups that have been doing it before us, uh, and we haven't been able to get a single thing out. Uh, just everything keeps coming back saying uh, classified uh, national security. Well, here are two kind of facts that... Um attracted my attention because they are related. Uh, in 2002, the government created more than 23 million secret documents at a cost of $5.7 billion. And then, according to a July poll this year, conducted by Scripps News Service, one-third of Americans, one-third, think the government either carried out the 9-11 attacks or intentionally allowed them to happen in order to provide a pretext for war in the Middle East. Somehow, the disconnect is people have this feeling of distrust about their government. The government has this distrust about the people, is not relieving the information. Uh, do you see, I mean, is there a, an intermarriage between these two facts? Well, another uh, study I would also point out came out recently. Another poll is I think only 16% of the people when polled pretty much agreed with the U.S. government view of what happened on 9-11, for instance, that the attacks basically couldn't be stopped and so forth. So you have almost 85% of the people have some level of doubt about that story. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that... that uh, the extreme secrecy, of course, uh, just makes people question. You, know, you automatically want to know why are they, uh, you know, why are they trying to hide so much? So that raises the doubts. Uh, so I think those two things do feed into each other, and, and rightfully so. I, w you know, I think we should have doubts. Well, I mean, is it possible that the administration and the government and the media are serving a deeper purpose? that perhaps the people themselves don't really want to know? When you look at Katrina of this year, when you look at 9-11, when you look at five years later, the first responders can't even still communicate with radios between the police and the fire department. Could it be that the idea of their government being so inept and so out of touch and so befuddled is more frightening to people than the fact of occasional catastrophes. I think that's true for a lot of people. I've talked to some people who said, I don't even want to watch the news because it's depressing. I'd just rather not know. Uh, I, I think that realizing the extent of, of what the government has done in some of these circumstances or what they've failed to do, uh, it, frankly, can be frightening. And, and sometimes it's just easier to just not even look there. But I think that as, 
citizens and as potential voters, I think it's our responsibility, really, uh, to look there. We have to know, uh, otherwise, what's going to stop the next 9-11 or the next Katrina or whatever from happening? There has to be an accountability. In these kinds of things, there has been really literally zero accountability. It's actually worse than that because in time and time again, the people who were in, you know, in the worst situations, you know, where, where things should have been done, they didn't do them. Those have been the people who have been promoted. Um, so I'm concerned, and I think we should all be concerned. You can't just, just stick your head in the sand. You know, the scariest news story that I read last year was in the New York Times Sunday Magazine. And the reporter who wrote the article was talking to a senior American official. And the American official said to the reporter, you know, you're a fact-based guy. And you're spending all your time figuring out what happened when. And while you're doing that, we men of action are changing history by making the facts on the ground. And it was such a kind of arrogance and such a disrespect for the facts, you know. So you've spent, obviously, a good part of your life putting these facts together. You obviously have faith in the power of information. What's been the feedback that you've gotten? How did this timeline change your life? Well, I remember that quote that you're talking about, by the way. I, I think uh, the, the official, unnamed, unnamed official kind of uh, mocked people who belong in the quote-unquote reality-based community yeah you know and uh, we, we see this process for instance uh, you know in the film where you can see all these different warnings and then you see these government pronouncements one after another there were no warnings you know there was nothing we could do and if enough officials say that kind of thing enough times that keeps getting in the headlines as at newspapers that kind of swamps all the other stories about the warnings, or at least creates enough doubt, so that uh, you know people often just give the government the benefit of the doubt, and that whole issue just kind of they manage to slide by without any real accountability. So that's exactly what that person is talking about. Like we, you know, he's saying we are creating the reality by just saying the same thing over and over again until everybody believes it. Right. And it's you know that's one thing that really inspires me to try to do something here because. We can't live in a world where the facts are what we want them to be. We have to face what the real facts are. And sometimes they're depressing or disturbing. Sometimes we have to do things as a result of them. We just can't kind of have rose-colored glasses. And so, you know, we need things like uh, what we've been doing with this website or what lots of other people uh, on the Internet and elsewhere have been doing, which is trying to bring these facts to light so that they don't get swamped and they don't get forgotten. Well, these people have the power to create conventional wisdom by owning the media, which is why Link TV is so important. And I'm going to talk about that for a minute and we'll get back to our conversation.